Hello friends of the Mandolin Cafe! I'm here today to talk a little bit about the amazing experience I had in Rio de Janeiro when two of my biggest dreams came true. Meeting Del Rian in person and playing Jacó do Bandolim's mandolin. To begin, I'm gonna talk a little bit about who is Del Rian. Del Rian is a mandolin player from Rio de Janeiro, very respected at the shorter world. He was the first successor of Jacó do Bandolim on his band after he passed away. His band is called Época de Ouro. And he was the only one allowed to be present at Jacó do Bandolim's rehearsal. So you can see how important this mandolin player is for, for us. In 1961, when Del Rio was turning 17, he was introduced to Jacó do Bandolim. By coincidence, they used to live at the same neighborhood where most of the shuttle players used to live in, in Rio de Janeiro, called Jacaré Paguá. So, at this Sunday evening, Del Rio went there afraid and scared because he was a huge fan of Jacó do Bandolim. And he, he went there and he played a choro by Pixinguinha called Ingenuo. He started to tap his foot on the floor. And then Jacó got up and he went to him and stepped on his foot and said, Someday you're gonna play at the, at the municipal with a microphone and you can't be tapping your foot on the floor and you, because you're gonna make noise. And he said, ah, okay, okay. And he stopped doing it forever. <laughs> A little bit later, the musicians start to arrive at Jacó's place for a roda de choro, for a jam session. And when the, the roda was over, and at the, the entrance of Jacó's house, Jacó put his hand over uh, Del Rian's shoulder and said, Kid, if you want, you can come here every Sunday morning. And that's how their friendship started. As I said before, Del Rio was the only person allowed to watch Jacos do Bandolin's rehearsal. As everyone say, he was Jacó do Bandolin's most dear uh, pupil. And it was very interesting uh, to meet Del Rio. He told me that at this time when he met Jacó, uh, Jacó had a house, a big house in, in Jacarepaguá with a big backyard and he used to organize very frequently so a race where the best artists from the time used to attend such as Pixinguinha, Luperce Miranda, Dorival Caymmi, uh, Elisete Cardoso and Del Rio was a teenager and he was exposed to all those amazing musicians from the golden era of the Brazilian music. Now I'm gonna tell you how I got to know Del Rio. Our father he used to buy all kinds of CDs and among all of them he bought this one called Inéditos de Jacó do Bandolim. My family and I listened to this album endlessly over and over and over again for all those years. Inéditos means never recorded before. So Jacó died in 1969 uh, and years later uh, Del Rio, always researching about his work, he found out 12 never recorded before compositions by Jacó do Bandolim. In 1980 he released the long play and then later in 1995 uh, they remastered it and released the CD. And then during the pandemics we started to do weekly live streams instead of monthly and they start to grow and more and more people start to watch us on YouTube. And to our surprise, one day we got a message from Del Rio and I was, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't believe. And uh, I remember I didn't show my father at that moment. And then he said that he, he was asking actually for the score of a composition by me and a friend called Paulo Fazanaro called Do Coração ao Bandolim. I was, being the girls, we couldn't believe that was happening. 
I responded and then I asked him a favor. I asked him to record uh, audio message telling this and talk, talking a little bit about what he thought about the, the music and saying his name that I would like to send that to Paulo Fazanaro, the friend that composed this tune with me. And he did. And I remember I showed it to my friend and show, showed it to our father. And the way he did the audio was so beautiful. It was like a, a, le a written letter and he said his name only at the end. So I remember I didn't say both to my father and to my friend who sent the message. I just sent to my friend and showed it to my dad. I, I pressed play and he st they started to listen to the, the, the voice. And then it was, oh. they were saying, oh, what a beautiful message. And at the end, he just said, Del here. <laughs> and then my father had tears on his eyes. It was an unforgettable moment. <laughs> After this day, there was a long way of pandemic uh, to come. So we were just waiting the day where we could finally go to Rio de Janeiro and meet Del Rio in person. When the pandemic finally uh, was over, I was gonna be, in the last min minute, I was gonna be in, in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, I knew that during that week. And then I thought, well, since I'm gonna be in Rio de Janeiro for the first time since the pandemics, I'm gonna write to Del Rio and see if, if he can meet me. And then I wrote to him and he said, yes, we can meet on the weekend. Uh, talk to Paulo. Paulo Mota is one of the members of the Instituto Jacó do Bandolim and a friend. So I talked to him and said I was gonna go to Rio de Janeiro and wanted to meet with Del Rio. Then Paulo and I reorganized uh, a very small Roda de Choro in Jacarepaguá, at a friend's house called Senhor Marlindo. I was going to be in Rio de Janeiro by myself. And I was very excited when I saw that all that was going to happen. And I was telling the girls, and the girls were starting to think, mm. Sounds good. <laughs> we wanted to go too. So they decided to go too. And then uh, one day before the trip, Paulo Mota called me and he was telling me about the, the, the right day, the, the time, where he was going to be. And then at the end of the call, he said, Elisa, I'm going to bring Jacob de Wanderlin's mandolin for you to meet. And then I I said, what? And I started to cry. I, 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 my voice disappeared and Paul said, Elisa, <laughs> Elisa. And then I said, okay, okay. Thank you, Paulo. Because Paulo is, is the responsible uh, for this mandolin. Jacó do Bandolin had two favorite mandolins, which he named number one and number two. In the article I wrote for Mandolin Café, I talk a little bit about each mandolin, number one, number two. I had the honor to meet in person the mandolin number two, which was the mandolin that Jacob play, played at the legendary concert at Teatro João Caetano in 1968, one year before his death. And then we finally were in Rio de Janeiro all together. We were a little bit late, but fortunately, Del Rio arrived at the same time, exactly the same time as we did. And then we finally met. It was, I can't describe how it was to, to see in person uh, someone that you listened over and over again since you were a child and that you would never expect you're gonna see that person live. So it was an unforgettable moment. And Paolo uh, invited other musicians so we could play together, play some shows. He invited this amazing cavaco player called Senor Siqueira, who is also a composer and is what we call Velha Guarda, Old Guard from Mangueira, a very important 
School of Samba. Another amazing player who was there is Tony Sete Cordas, and he was part of Época de Ouro after Jacó's passing for many, many years, playing side by side with Gino Sete Cordas and Cesar Faria, one of the most important seven and six string guitars duo. So we all entered the house. I gave a big hug at Del Rian, his son. Bruno here, who is also a mandolinist, mandolinist, was also there. So I was very emotional by then. And then I saw the, a case of an old mandolin over the table. Paulo Mota came to talk to me. He said, hi. There was a long time that we met each other online, but we never met in person. So it was also the first time I met Paulo in person. So he said, Come see Elisa, and then he opened the case and gave the mandolin to me. And suddenly I saw myself with, with a piece of history in my hands and I was just overwhelmed. I can't describe the, the feeling I had that moment, it was amazing. Uh, I had like a movie going on my my mind, a movie about Jacó, all, all that I listen to his recordings, all the stories I heard about him. Uh, the moments uh, I had in short of music, the first time I played mandolin, all the recordings I practiced with, it was unforgettable. And uh, Senor Siqueira, the cavaco player, at this moment he started to play a composition by him. That to me was just perfect for the moment. That is why this music is called show. <laughs> Para vocês aí, ó. 2018, homenagem de Jacó. 100 anos de Jacó foi meu último trabalho em CD. CD que eu não gravo mais, não vou gravar mais. Isso aqui é só uma aula. Isso aqui faz é, 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 parte do meu Professor, bota nessa bolsinha para vocês. Ah, obrigada. Nossa, que presentão. Deixa eu ver. Ó. For me, just that was more than enough. But then Paulo, he started to change the strings and then he gave me the mandolin. He took from his pocket a pick and he said, that's Jacob de Van Lins pick. Okay. And then he said, go ahead, now you can play. I had no idea that I was going to be able to play uh, that mandolin. So just you know, there are tradition here in Brazil where when you are a beginner you and you buy a new instrument, you have to give your mandolin or guitar to a master to play. So the master is going to teach the instrument how to play some things. So you can imagine what I felt when I was holding the mandolin that belonged to the god of the Brazilian mandolin. So I was thinking, Almighty oh, mandolin, that I shall be worthy of your knowledge. <laughs> and I definitely thought about Jacó. I thought at the same time, I remember that I thought uh, for a couple of times, as if Jacó was there, and I was thinking, uh, Jacó, uh, with your permission or saying excuse to play his mandolin, because I know uh, how personal is an, an instrument to, to its owner and for a musician, and I know that Jacó was someone very serious and took music and choro and the mandolin very, very seriously with a lot of respect. So a couple of times I thought about that too. So holding Jacado Bandolin's mandolin 
was the closest thing I could have to knowing him. And at the end, I played all the jam session with, with his mandolin. Oh, yeah. The jam session couldn't be better. It was wonderful. We played for hours. Playing with Del here was something overwhelming. played vibrações, pérolas, many of the, the tunes that Jacó recorded or his arrangements. We played Do Coração ao Bandolim, that same piece that Del Rio asked me to send the score, composed by me and by Paulo Fazanaro. <laughs> We played Murmurando, uh, and Del Ria mentioned it was one of Jacó's favorite shows. <laughs> We played waltzes, we talked a lot, Del Rio told us so many cool stories from that time that he misses uh, many of the musicians, the, the golden time of Rio de Janeiro, how the neighborhood used to be, how the city used to look, all those things, it was such a rich experience. We left that jam session with our hearts full of such wonderful feelings and I'll stay with that for the rest of my life. I'd like to say thank you to Del Rio for being such a great person and an inspiration for me as a mandolin player and to all the other mandolin players that love short music. I'd like to say thank you to Paulo Mota for making all this possible, I will never forget. Also, thank you to the Instituto Jacob Bandolin for preserving and taking care of the history and memory of this important mandolin player. And to finish, thank you so much, Mandolin Café,
for giving me this opportunity to share a little bit with all the Mendel friends we have around the world to talk a little bit about this amazing experience I had in Rio de Janeiro. My dear friend Dan Beinborn interviewed me for this article, so don't forget to read. And I hope to see you guys in our 2023 US tour. Bye! Ciao!